In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a quick overview of the protocols for Casper coin in chronological order. So I've got this document here that kind of outlines what these protocols are and how they relate to Casper coin. And we're going to be looking at them all and then I'm going to be explaining kind of what they do and what the evolution leads to in terms of the future of Casper coin. So these are all cited on the Casper coin website. I'll try to leave links to all of them in the description below. But if you can't find the links, they're on publications here. So you can just click on Casper coin and click on publications. And at the bottom, it shows research publications for pretty much all of the things discussed in this video. So let's start out our timeline in 2013 with the ghost protocol. So this was authored by Dr. Jonathan Sobolinski, and we know who that is, and Aviv Zohar. This is talking about the ghost protocol and ghost actually stands for, if we scroll down here uh, through this paper, greedy heaviest observed subtree, so ghost. In this section, we present our main contribution to the protocol, a new policy for the selection of the main chain in the block tree. The advantage of this suggested change to the protocol is that it maintains the security threshold for successful 50% attacks, even if the network suffers from extreme delays and the attacker does not. This allows the protocol designer to set high block creation rates and large block sizes without the fear of approaching the 50% attack cliff edge, which in turn implies that high transaction throughput can be easily securely maintained. So right here they're talking about the 51% attacks that a lot of networks are basically their main threat is the 51% attack for proof of work cryptocurrencies. So here we have a greediest heavy observed subtree which allows the network to suffer from extreme delays and the attacker does not, but it also protects the network in these delays. And as it says here, the protocol design is to set a high block creation rate and large block sizes without fear of approaching the 50% attack cliff edge. So therefore we can have higher transaction throughput and be securely maintained, which is what Casper coin does right now. So this is like the seed for Casper coin. This is like when, you know, the ideas come in your head of what you can create, this is probably the seed in 2013, remember, so this was 10 years ago that this paper was written. Now, Ethereum did nearly adopt it into their protocol. Uh, it says, in contradiction to other questions asked on this post, Ethereum actually does not use Ghost, but it was considered. Original Ghost protocol replaces Bitcoin's longest chain rule with the heaviest subtree, having all uncles contribute to the total difficulty. Ethereum does, however, use a modified version of the inclusive protocol roughly an inclusive new blocks reference multiple predecessors, non-conflicting transactions of blocks outside the main chain are included in Ledger. So the difference between Ethereum and Casper coin obviously is the DAG. So with Ethereum, it's just a chain and then DAG obviously references multiple blocks and it looks for orphan blocks and it references those as well so they're not wasted. So that's Ghost Protocol and it's obviously been cited a lot by the Ethereum team and other cryptocurrencies across the board since 2013 when it came out. A lot of people have cited it for a potential use case. Then in 2016, Yonatan comes out with Spectre Protocol, which we have here, which he also wrote with this Yod Lewenberg and Aviv Zohar again. Now, this is the main basis of what we see for Casper coin. So Ghost was kind of just an idea and a protocol that could be implemented instead of the Bitcoin longest chain rule. However, this is the main actual basis of Casper coin is in the Spectre protocol. So it says Spectre is a new protocol for the consensus core of cryptocurrencies that remains even secure under high throughput and fast confirmation times. At any throughput, Spectre is resilient to attackers with up to 50% of the computational power. Spectre can operate at arbitrarily high block creation rates, which implies that its transactions confirm in mere seconds, limited mostly to the round trip time in the network. Spectre's underlying model falls into the category of partial synchronous networks. It depends on the existence of some bound on the delivery time of messages between honest participants, but the protocol itself does not contain any parameter that depends on this bound. Therefore, this is the start of the parameterlessness of Casper coin through Dagnight. So this is one of the key ingredients for what Dagnite is written upon. So this was in 2016. So they came up with the parameterlessness of a cryptocurrency or a chain in 2016. And subsequently, Yonatan also went on to produce Phantom, which is kind of a 
parallel to Spectre, I believe. Now, I couldn't actually find the Phantom paper because Phantom Ghost Tag is pretty much the same thing. But the Phantom paper was released in 2018, so two years after the Spectre protocol. And there's a video on YouTube here, Spectre B Pass, if you can see here, Phantom Protocol, and then why it's secure, and then the Spectre Protocol on top of that. I'll leave that linked in the description if you want to actually look at it all. It's very interesting stuff to do with Casper Coin and these protocols. But that 2018 paper I can't actually find. However, in 2018, there becomes a thing called DAG Labs, which is obviously Block DAG Labs, and subsequently Casper Coin is built off that in 2021. However, for the next two, three years, we only see Phantom Protocol and Casper development, so there's nothing actually coming out. Then in 2020, we see Ghost Tag Protocol, and then in 2021, we see Phantom Ghost Tag, which originated from the Phantom Paper and its applications as the Casper Consensus. So what I was saying there was, we have Phantom, but it's all been generalized into one paper called Phantom Ghost Tag, so we had Phantom and Ghost Tag and it's just kind of put together. As it says by here, Spectre and Phantom Ghost Tag are somewhat parallel because they both have properties that others do not. Ghost Tag has linear ordering, whereas Spectre does not, but Spectre is parameterless. But only Dagnite achieves both of these, thus acting as the technological diamond in terms of flow. So Phantom Ghost Tag plus Spectre is what makes up Dagnite. And subsequently in 2023, we have this paper Dagnite protocol, the parameterless generalization of the Nakamoto consensus. So all of these protocols that we've seen been made over the past 10 years are all collated into what we call the Dagnite protocol. So this is going to be a parameterless plus linear ordering protocol, which will allow for high block creation rates, high throughput, high speed on the network, and a massive amount of security on the network as well because the network can actually react whilst the attacker is coming in. Normally it's hard coded so this means that you can only hard code up to a certain latency. If the network slows down you can actually perform an attack. The more delay on the network means the less computing power you need to actually attack the network. For example if you had a delay of one millisecond and that jumped up to 10 milliseconds you wouldn't need 51% attack, you'd need like 45% of the network computing power to perform an attack. So therefore, with the parameterlessness that Dagnite brings, it means that the latency can actually move different parameters, so it can go up and down depending on how people are trying to attack the network. So that's how Dagnite achieves both acting as the technological diamond. Now Shai, who is also a developer for Casper Coin, proved the security of Ghost Dag, by creating conclusive mathematical proof. This proof was then upgraded and extended by Michael Sutton to form a proof for Dagnite. Now, Dagnite was published by Michael Sutton and Yonatan, as it says here. However, I didn't list any of that by here because technically they're all part of Dag Labs and then part of Casper since 2021. So I know it says October 1st, 2022 for the Dagnite protocol and it says February, 2023 here because they, I believe, updated this protocol and then republished it. So it was actually originally published in 2022. However, before that protocol is actually implemented, so this is when it was published, we need to actually update to the Rust coding language before Dagnite is implemented. And as we know, and we've seen on a couple of videos that I've made, the Rust update is coming along very well. We're seeing high blocks per second. I believe they're testing out four blocks per second, and then they're testing out eight blocks per second. And hopefully that goes well, and if it does, it means that we can start to up the block rate. And I believe when they find a steady block rate, they're gonna try the implementation of Dagnite. So we still got a long timeline, but we'll get there soon. And hopefully Casper's vision that they have for it can be achieved in a relatively short time frame in terms of cryptocurrency. So we're talking maybe three years, maybe two years, something like that. For the following three years between Ghost Dag and Dagnite, so this is this three years by here. Yonatan advised Michael on building a proof. They ran into a challenge after challenge. Each one required a major enhancement to the original idea. By doing so layer after layer, they built a unique solution, which we can read about in the Dagnite paper. So this is what I've written for the main overview of Dagnite. Dagnite achieves responsiveness whilst being 50% Byzantine tolerant. So that's the 51% attack. It is therefore faster and more secure than Ghost Dag, so the previous version. 
In Dagnite, there's no priory hard-coded parameter k. Consequently, you can adapt to real k in the network. So this is what we're talking about, the latency. In Dagnite, clients of their own wallet should incorporate k into their local confirmation policy of transactions, similarly to how some clients require six confirmations in Bitcoin and some 30 confirmations, such as exchanges. So when talking about confirmations on the network, you could see normally if you're transferring, you know, your funds over to a centralized exchange, you'll see that you have to wait a certain amount of confirmations before they can verify that that is gone through. So the more confirmations you can get on the network, the quicker you can verify transactions. And therefore, you know, we can actually verify transactions very quickly in comparison to other coins like Bitcoin or Ethereum. I know on TXBit, it takes 1,200 transaction confirmations, which seems like a lot, but technically it's only 1,200 seconds at the one blocks per second. But if they're up to eight blocks per second, it would do that in eight times less than 1,200 seconds. So you can see how having a higher throughput and higher blocks per second could lead to quicker confirmations on the network and therefore you can verify transactions quicker. And this is what Dagnite is supposed to achieve overall. So that's just my quick overview of the protocols for Caspercoin and what it's built upon. Obviously, you can deep dive into it more if you want to read all the protocols. I've linked them down below. Lastly, on the Casper website, it says that the upgrade consensus to follow the Dagnite protocol is in development, but the Rust language coding upgrade needs to be completed first. So it's in testing, it's going to be completed, and then this will probably be put up for testing, and then it will be completed, I want to say in a year's time, but it's probably looking like two years time. And hopefully we know that Yonatan's always working on something new, so maybe he'll come out with another publication that will add to Casper Coin. So I hope you guys learned something from this. If you did, please like and subscribe to the channel. And hopefully I can hit 2000 subscribers soon where I'll probably be doing a Casper giveaway.